Hello everyone, I'm Daniel Munoz and this is the presentation of my final project for the Matrix Group course. And today I'm gonna to talk about the Bruja decomposition for GeoNC. So this is the overview I'm going to follow. Firstly, I'm going to uh, give some motivation and a brief explanation of the main theorem. Then I will introduce some preliminaries and introduction notation. Then I will talk about the Bruja decomposition theorem itself and the more general form. And I will provide a sketch of the proof then I will talk about the Bruja decomposition theorem for GeoNC. And finally, I will give an application of the main theorem on the two by two matrices. So firstly, as a motivation, the Bruja decomposition is something related to Lie groups theory. So it was introduced by, by Frankes Bruja for classical groups and by Claude Chibeo in general. So basically the Bruja decomposition theorem for a group G says that G can be decomposed as the union of the double cosets BWB where B is a Borel subgroup of G, and this W in, in capital W is something called the Weil group. I will talk about this uh, later on the presentation. Uh, for the preliminaries and introduction notation, basically I need to define what does it mean at each system. So this motivates to the following definition. Let G be a group with subgroups B and N uh, uh, satisfying the following conditions. So actually the conditions are going to be called axioms. The axiom T is one, it says that the group T, which is the intersection of B and N is normal in N. The second axiom TS2 says that there is a specific set of generators I of the well group W, which is the quotient of N and T, such that if I take S in I, then S squared equals one. And as I said before, this W is called the well group. The axiom TS3, it says that if I take an element W in capital W in the weight group and S in the set of generators, then I have the following condition. WBS is contained in BWSB union BWB. And I'm going to call to this equation uh, or, or this inclusion uh, question one. Then I have two extra axioms. Axiom TS4, it says that if I take an element S in the set of generators I, then S, B, S inverse is, not, is different from B. And finally, you have the last axiom, axiom TS5. It says that the group G is generated by N and B. And in this case, I'm gonna say that B and I is a teeth system of T. Now that I have, set, uh, I have set up, what does it mean to be a teeth system for a group G? Then I can talk about the Bruja decomposition theorem on the more general form. And the statement is the following. The theorem says that if I take a triple B and I at each system of a group G and W the weight group, which is the question of B and T, where T is the interse intersection of B and N, then I have the following decomposition. G can be decomposed as a union of double cosets, B, W, B, where W runs over all the, all the elements in the weight group. And there is an abuse of notation, if W in the weight group is represented by omega in N, then we write BWB for B omega B. And, and something extra which says the theorem is that the union is actually disjoint. Now I will provide a sketch of the proof of this uh, Bruja decomposition theorem on the general, uh, the general statement of the Bruja decomposition theorem. So firstly, I'm going to denote by CW to the double coset BWB. And basically, I want to prove that the union of the double cosets is actually a group. In order to do that, I need to prove that it is close undertaking inverse and also it is close under multiplication. So in the first point, I prove that it is close undertaking inverse. So I take G, an element in the union of the double cosets. That's, that means in particular that G belongs to some double cosets BWB or some W in the way group. This means that also, uh, little g can be graded as b w b prime, where b and b prime are elements in my uh, in my group uh, capital B. And from here, I can deduce that if I take inverse, take it, the taking inverse of g is nothing but just taking inverse of b w b prime, which is b prime inverse w inverse b inverse. Because remember that b is a group, so that means that b prime inverse and b inverse are in b. And the way group is also a group. So that means that a W inverse is also in, in, in the way group. And therefore I have that G inverse is in the inside of the double cosets 
B, W inverse B, which is in the union of the double cosets, because as I said before, W inverse is in the weight group. Therefore, this is proving that uh, the inverse is also in the union of the, union of the double cosets. And uh, as a conclusion, the union of the double cosets is close under taking inverse. Now I want to prove that it is also close under multiplication. And in order to do that, I, I need to prove that for any two elements, W1 and W2 in the weight group, we have that the product of CW1 times CW2 is in the union of the double cosets. That's basically the definition of being close under multiplication. And I'm going to prove this by induction on L of W2, where by L of W, I mean the smallest k, such that W admits a factorization of this form. So basically W can be decomposed as a product of k elements, S1 up to SK, where S1 uh, up to SK are in the set of generators. Or I'm gonna say that the that L of W is zero when W is just identical. Sometimes this L function is called the length function of the weight group. So if I want to prove this by induction, basically I start by uh, the base case. That is, that is when the length of W2 is zero. So in this case, by definition, W2 is nothing but just identity. And then I have the following condition. C of W1 times C of W2 is nothing but just C of W1 times B because C of W2 is going to be B since W2 is actually the identity. Then because C of W1 is by definition B W1B, then when I multiply by B on the right-hand side, then I recover C of W1. And therefore I conclude that C of W1 times C of W2 is nothing but just C of W1, which is of course inside of the union of the double cosets. This is proving that C of W1 times C of W2 is inside of the union of the double cosets, which is proving that it, uh, the, the group is close under multiplication, uh, at least on the base case, when I take the length of W2 equals zero. Then I want to prove that this is also true when the length is any number, any natural number. So I'm going to suppose that it is, it is true for the length of W2 less or equal than K. And I want to prove that this is true when the length of W2 equals to K, K plus one. So if the length of W2 equals to K plus one, I can write W2 as S times W2 prime, where S is going to be an element in my set of generators. And W2 prime is going to be such that the length of W2 prime is less or equal than K. Now, by axiom TS3, I have the following inclusion. So W1 times B times S is contained in BW1SB union BW1B. Therefore, I get the following inclusion. C of W1 times C of W2 is by definition BW1B SW2 prime B. But then I'm going to use that in this expression. Here in the middle, I have W1BS and I have this inclusion I, I got before. Therefore, I get the following inclusion. This is contained in the union of BW1S BW2 prime B and BW1B W2 prime B. Lastly, know that BW1B is nothing but just C of W1 and BW2 prime B is nothing but just C of W2 prime B. Similarly, the first element which appears here, BW1SB is nothing but just C of W1S and BW2 prime B is nothing but just C of W2 prime. Therefore, I get that C of W1 times C of W2 is contained in the union of C of W1 times C of W2 prime and C of W1S times C of W2 prime. Then I will use the induction hypothesis. Remember that the length of W2 prime is at most K and therefore I have that C of W1 times C of W2 is contained in the union of the double process. Similarly, C of W1S times C of W2 prime is contained in the union of the double cosset as well. Therefore, I conclude that the union of the two elements is contained in the union of the double cosset. And because of this equation I had before, I get that C of W1 times C of W2 is contained in the union of the double cosset, which is proving that uh, the union of the double cosset is close under multiplication. So this finish the induction process. So, so far I have proven that the union of the double cosset, it is close under taking inverse and also it is close under multiplication. That is the union of the double cosset, it is actually a group. Then I want to use this fact to prove that actually G is the union of the double cosset. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to use these two facts. Firstly, N and B are contained in the union of the double cosset. Why? 
because B is actually B times identity times B. And for an element omega in N, I have that omega can be written as one omega one, which is in B omega B. And remember that as an abuse augmentation, this is the same as B W B. So that means that N and B are sub subsets of the union of the double quadrant. Therefore, on the other hand, I have that the group generated by N and B is contained in the union of the double cosets. Why? Because the union of the double cosets, it is already a group. And by definition, the, the group generated by N and B is the smallest group containing N and B. Therefore, I conclude that the group generated by N and B is contained in the union of the, group, of the double cosets. But axiom TS5 actually says that G is the group generated by N and B. Therefore, I'm proving that G is contained in the union of the double process. The other inclusion is clear because G is the complete uh, gr group. And therefore, I can conclude that G is the union of the double process. In order to finish the proof, it remains to prove that uh, uh, actually this union is disjoint. So I'm not gonna prove that because otherwise the presentation will be too large. But basically it, the, the idea goes like this. So I'm gonna use the fact that two double cosets are either disjoint or equal. So it remains to prove that if CW equals to CW prime, then W equals W prime. With all laws of generality, I can assume that the length of W is less or equal than the length of W prime. And the rest of the proof is proceeding by induction on the length of W. It's something similar to we have done before, of course, using the other axiom. So I have proven the Bruchab decomposition theorem on the marginal form. And then I want to introduce the Bruchab decomposition theorem for GONC. So in order to do that, I need to set up a TIT system for GONC. And this is precisely what I'm going to do now. So I'm gonna take B to be the Borel subgroup of upper triangular matrices in T, T, the, T to be the set of diagonal matrices, and N to be the normalizer of T in G. Also, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take A as S1 up to S minus one, which is the set of generators, where SI is not is going to be nothing but just the image in the well group of this matrix in here. So it's basically like the identity except by uh, these two elements, which are not in the diagonal. So it can be proven that this triple P and I is actually a TIT system for the ONC. For the purpose of the presentation, I'm also not gonna prove that. But at the end of my presentation, I'm gonna show my reference. And in Lee Group's book by Daniel Baum, the complete proof can be found. Then I can establish the theorem, the book of the composition theorem for the particular case when my group B is DONC, the set of invertible matrices. So I'm gonna take N to be a natural number, B the Borel subgroup of upper triangular matrices, a T the set of diagonal matrices, and N the normalizer of T in G just as I took before those elements. And as I said before, it can be proven that B and I is actually the triple is a tip system of G, O, and C. And therefore, uh, it, it, it is followed by the Bruchat decomposition theorem that G, uh, G, O, and C can be decomposed as a union of double cosets, B, W, B, where uh, W runs over all the elements in the well group, and B is the set of Borel, and is the Borel sub, uh, subgroup of upper triangular matrix. Before I go, I proceed to my example on the two by two matrices. Just let's go to analyze a little bit what, what the term is saying. By the way, it can be proven that N, which is the normalizer of T in G, is nothing but just the set of monomial matrices. What, what are those matrices? Those matrices are uh, the matrices uh, having exactly one non zero element in each row and each column. So basically, the term is saying that for any invertible matrices, can be decomposed as the product of uh, one matrix B1 times another matrix W times another matrix B1, I mean B2, where B1 and B2 are going to be upper triangular and W is in the well group. But remember that I'm using a double of notation. So by B, W, me, B, I mean actually B omega B, where W in the well group is represented by omega in N. So actually, my, 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 my matrix in here is going to be in N. That means it's going to be a monomial matrix. So basically, the Bruchat decomposition theorem is saying that any invertible matrix, uh, let's say A, can be decomposed as B1 times W times B2, where B1 and B2 are going to be upper triangular, and W is going to be a monomial matrix. And of course, I'm going to show this uh, decomposition on the particular case of two by two invertible matrices. 
So this could be the application of the theorem. So I'm gonna take G and an invertible, a two by two invertible matrix. That means G can be, can be seen as A, B, C, D, where A, D minus B, C, which is a determinant is not zero. That means a matrix is invertible. And in this case, I have that the sets T, N and B are given as follows. So T is the set of diagonal matrices, as I said before. B is the set of upper triangular matrices, uh, A, B, C, or D, where A, B, and D are complex number. And N is going to be the normalizer of uh, T in G. And as I said before, it can be proven that N is nothing but just the set of monomial matrices. So the decomposition on the two by two matrices goes like this. So basically I have two different decompositions depending on whether C is zero or not. If C is not zero, then my arbitrary matrix A, B, C, D can be decomposed as the product of these three matrices. Where as you can see, the first and last one are upper triangular, but the middle one is a monomial one, a monomial matrix. When C is zero, actually the decomposition is easier. So in this case, A, B, C, D is nothing but just the matrix A, B, C, or D. And it can be written as A, B, C, or D itself times the identity times the identity. And as you can see, the first matrix, A, B, C, or D, and the identity are upper triangular. And the, and the one in the middle is, of course, monomial. So this will be the decomposition for the two by two invertible matrices. So that basically that will be everything for my presentation. Thank you very much. And as I say, here is my list of references. So the first one is, is uh, the one where I got most of the proof. So uh, this, league, this league group book by Daniel Baum, in this book, you can find almost all the proof of, of the main theorem. So in case you want to give a look to the complete proof, you may want to check this book. So that will be all for today. Thank you very much. And I hope you enjoyed the presentation.